All right, so about a couple weeks ago, I took the Murray out around the track really fast, and uh, she didn't like it too much. She was puking some oil out into the uh, intake, intake breather, uh, through the PCV system down into the carburetor, and it was burning all kinds of oil. It made a mess. Uh, never quit on me, never died, which is pretty amazing. But uh, there's definitely some sort of problem here with the intake system, so it's something that I'm definitely interested in trying to fix and prevent from happening again. So here's where we're starting, a very tore down intake system on the Murray Off-Road Mower. You can see the airbox is completely gone. Uh, it's actually sitting up here. And this thing is, uh, well, I mean, it's an original air filter that's been slightly modified, so it's like an open element. But these, uh, these stock Briggs filters really don't flow for shit. Um, they're paper filters. And you can see the inside of this one, uh, it's, it pretty much got coated in oil. And I think a lot of the problem, the reason is the uh, PCV was uh, allowing so much oil to pass through it is because the air filter was slightly plugged, so it probably allowed a lot of suction to be passed through that PCV system. I went ahead and bought a new PCV breather and put it in there, even though my old one was probably totally fine. Um, I extended the hose a little bit for my intake modification, which I'm going to show you some pieces of right now. All right, so this thing right here is my own engineering marvel of sorts. This is a uh, air filter adapter, I guess you would call it, for a Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Right here I've got a uh, dummy carburetor, so you can kind of see how this goes together. This is what you would see when you remove your air filter on a Briggs & Stratton, your newer standard Briggs & Stratton OHV or flathead motors. Um, the single cylinders anyways, and you've got these two studs that stick out because they thread in and this is what bolts your carburetor to your intake manifold. So the idea here is, mind you there's usually a seal right here, I'm just demonstrating this for you right now, is this will attach like that. As you can see, the studs pass through so you have enough room to screw your bolts down and you still have enough room to avoid hitting those bolts underneath which is kind of a pain in the ass. So basically the whole thing bolts together like this and what this does is it essentially allows you to add whatever you want like a universal intake off the end of this plastic tube. So basically this was the end piece to the shop vac. This is the part that actually passed into the vacuum and the hose used to attach to it here if you ignore all this metal, didn't exist obviously. And what I've done is essentially I removed that piece from the shop back hose, was able to slide it into my piece of exhaust tubing, and then sealed it off with just some RTV silicone. Um, like I said, it's pretty simple now that you look at it, now that I've described it, but I tell you what, it took me a couple days to come up with this stupid little thing. Um, and as simple as it is, uh, I think it'll work pretty good. The other advantage here is I'm not going to just stop at leaving the air filter just behind the motor or something like that. I'm going to turn this whole high flow air filter intake assembly into a snorkel assembly. So what I'm basically going to do is run that tubing up underneath this gas tank up into the center console and I'm going to get it as high up into the center console as I can. So you can see my little air filter adapter has been bolted into place. Uh, choke cables hooked up. As you can see that whole system works perfectly fine. Uh, you can see I temporarily attached my PCV tube. Right there, I just had to cut it and splice in a small piece of tubing temporarily. Uh, I don't know whether or not I'm going to run this thing without the catch can, but it's there if I need to. So the idea now is going to be try to take all these weird bends and straights and funny little pieces and create some sort of a high flow intake snorkel system. So here we go. This is, uh, this is what I came up with. After finagling, bending, twisting, tweaking, and messing around for probably almost an hour, I've got the shape almost perfect. Uh, I got the routing almost perfect. Yeah, pretty excited about the way this is actually working out. This looks pretty badass. It is kind of long, but since it's got such a large diameter tube, I think it'll uh, it'll still get plenty of air. Um, the actual air filter intake on a Briggs & Stratton motor is like that big. And when you look at that thing, I mean, there's quite a difference. There's a huge difference. So I don't think it's going to be starving for air. If anything, it might have too much air. I'm hoping I don't have to rejet my carburetor after doing this, but only time will tell. Now this thing does look big and bulky, but you actually can weave it in here like a Chinese jigsaw puzzle. You just got to avoid uh, the choke cable, the fuel line, and the steering shaft. There. See? How cool is that? It just barely dodges everything. You couldn't uh, ask for a better angle to fit through this small little space in here. And you can see 
up here where the throttle used to be, that's the end of my air filter. So that is as high as it can possibly be without coming through the top of the center console. I haven't actually built the mount for it yet, but uh, that's what we're going to work on next. So you can see I got the mount welded in there. It's firmly welded down to the frame of the lawnmower. And it does make it significantly more difficult to weave this intake assembly up into the chassis or the center console of this lawnmower. You can see I had to actually nip the corner off of the mount right there to get everything to clear properly. And I actually have to remove the two screws out of the side of my fuel tank to give me just enough clearance to slide everything in. So there's the intake installed. And I actually banded it down with one hose clamp. You might not be able to see it. Um, it's right there. Um, it's hooked to the mount and it's actually pretty solid. I'm very, very happy with the mount. And what's really cool is that this rubber connector, you can actually undo this thing from this side and this side and pull this thing out all by itself with the whole rest of the intake still in place. So if you need to actually mess with your carburetor, you don't have to pull this whole shit apart. You just take this rubber connector, because it bends, it just comes right out. Undo your two bolts, undo the uh, choke cable, and boom. You got your carburetor, everything's easy. You don't need to go in messing with the fuel tank and doing all that stuff to get to the air filter, because that's it really is a pain in the ass now. So unfortunately it started raining which chased me into the garage, but that's no big deal. Um, now that I've got the general layout of the intake uh, pretty much constructed and marked, I can go ahead and use some all-purpose uh, rubber cement to glue all these PVC pieces together. One thing I'll also mention is I also added a couple of sheet metal screws to hold this plastic bit into the metal bit. And I would probably recommend you try to find a metal piece like this, just to that way you could actually weld this together. Um, this is just what I had in my shop, so I used plastic. We'll see how long it lasts. Um, but you can see the screws protruding through the center there. Um, not that much of an obstruction for air. This is about twice the size of the inlet of the Briggs carburetor, so there's, that's not going to uh, obstruct the airflow at all. But yeah, now that we're done, I'm going to disassemble the plastic intake tube piece and go ahead and glue all the pieces together. And once this stuff sits and dries for a little while and the temperature warms up a little bit, I can go ahead and start painting. So finally, the sun decided to come back out, the rain stopped, so as you can see I was able to get outside and do some painting. So to install this new intake system, I have to first install the air filter adapter on the carburetor, and when I install this, I actually have to thread the choke cable through the choke cable hold down and install that all simultaneously. After that's all attached, I'll just temporarily hook up the PCV. Like I said, I still need a catch can. And then we take the whole intake snorkel tube and thread it up under the gas tank into the center console. This is not very easy, it is definitely a pain in the butt, and I'm sure I'm scratching the crap out of it while I'm doing this. Once the intake snorkel pipe and air filter are in place, it's time to bolt it down to the mount that we built earlier. And to do that, I'm just using a standard hose clamp and tightening it down. Now once those two things are all into place, the only thing left to do is attach the last little 90 degree rubber elbow. But as you can see, this thing just slides right into place pretty easily, and now that everything's all bolted down, it's actually pretty sturdy. Now the last thing we got to do is hook up the throttle spring return, and this is one thing you probably don't want to forget. Um, I drilled a little hole in the bottom of my flange, as you can see, and the spring just kind of sets in there and works exactly like it did before, so I know it's a reliable setup. I haven't started it up since it puked oil into the intake, so this might take a minute. There you have it folks, we have built a cold air snorkel intake on a Briggs & Stratton engine. 
it's completely waterproof up until the filter and I'd say it works pretty good. You could hear it kind of hunting for an RPM and I think that's either gum or oily crap in the jet or maybe the jet is now undersized with the large amount of air entering the carburetor. Um, it could also be my air fuel mixture is a little off. Maybe I can just adjust this just a tiny bit and uh, get the mixture right. If not, then maybe I'll have to rejet it. Not really sure yet. I got a little bit more tinkering to do, but you get the general idea. Snorkel kit, pretty easy to build. I put this together for, I'm going to say 30 bucks, including the filter. Um, so it's not that bad. It's not that cheap, but it's good insurance. Um, hopefully you guys like the video. Hopefully you like the mod. Give me a thumbs up if you do. I always appreciate it a lot. Uh, like I said, a little more tinkering to do, and I think this baby is back up to 100%. And we'll be out racing on the track in no time. Still got to get my catch can, though. Can't forget that. Uh, don't want to drive it until I have that on there. So uh, that's why I'm not doing a test drive today. But let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Rate me up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Because I'm always coming up with crazy new tech ideas to do lawnmowers. So if you want to be on the bandwagon, sign up. Let's do it. See you in the next video. Yeah, here's one final shot with the hood on. I didn't even think about hood clearances. But geez, did I luck out. One little piece of supplemental information I want to pass along to you guys, just in case you do plan on doing something like this yourself. When looking at one of these carburetors and you're building your adapter, one thing you really want to make sure you do so you don't screw yourself over in the long run is leave these ports open. So you don't want to put a small circular object in here as your intake air filter adapter and cover up these ports on either side of your carb. If you do, you will probably lose tons of mid and high end RPM, uh, maybe even low end. I'm not exactly sure which circuit these are attached to, if they're low RPM or high RPM circuits. But uh, definitely not something you want to cover up. Uh, leave those open. This is the back side of the carburetor. But, you know, be sure to not cover those up because if you do, you're going to cause lots of problems for your motor.